Howdy, Ags. Welcome to Aggie Growth Hacks, the podcast powered by the McFerrin Center for Entrepreneurship at Texas A&M that is dedicated to highlighting fast-growing Aggie entrepreneurs, learning how they have overcame growth challenges with creative growth hacks, and then connecting them with the other entrepreneurs in the Aggie network. I'm your host, Fighting Texas Aggie, class of 2001, Greg Martin. And I'm your other host, Chris Hunter, Fighting Texas Aggie, class of 1998. Whoop! Got a little story for you, Ags. Mike Meincher, Fighting Texas Aggie, class of 1989, he got a degree in industrial distribution and then went on to work for some other companies. Then, after he was 40, he got that entrepreneurial itch and he started not one, but two companies that have received Aggie 100 awards. So pass it on back and listen up to Mike as he shares some good bull. Well, howdy, everyone. We've got an amazing episode this week. We have Mike Meincher with us. And Mike is, has the distinction of being a two-time Aggie 100 winner. But most amazingly, he has taken two separate businesses to the Aggie 100 and been uh, one of the top 100 fastest growing Aggie companies. So Mike, thank you so much for coming. Welcome to Aggie Growth Hacks. Well, howdy. You're welcome. Glad to be here. Well, we, we appreciate you, uh, your willingness to share your knowledge with us. And so we want to get kicked right off. Uh, of course, we all enjoy and love Texas A&M. I wanted to ask if you can share with us your favorite Aggie memory. It had to be actually first deciding to come here. This is kind of a tough deal. But I grew up a, a huge Longhorn fan, actually, because my, what? my, my dad uh, is a Texas Ag. <laughs> my uncle's in the in the Texas Hall of Fame. You notice I'm not saying the initials. He actually played in the Olympics in 1960, so there was a lot going against it. I uh, came out of high school not ready for college and got my grades up at Southwest Texas State, which is Texas State now. Went to transfer to Texas and uh, – Saw things up there that I didn't want to see that wasn't in line with my my values. So I took my uh, Longhorn dad up to A and M to interview. The only place I knew to park was the chicken, so don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we walked on campus, and a guy named Dr. Stone, who had to retire, spent about two hours with me, and I found out the IB program was perfect for me. And on the way off the campus, I'm trying to be fast with this. My dad said, uh, "You know, you ought to consider this." And I go, "Well, Dad, I'm an Aggie." And I've never looked back go. since, and I'm nice. so proud to be an Aggie. Nice. So uh, tell us a little bit about your business and why you chose to start it, and maybe both of your businesses, you know, while we're talking about that. Yeah, I started both of them at the same time, 2007. Wow. Uh, I was a little over 40. If you have the entrepreneurial bug and you got the money or the means to get there, don't wait that long. The freedom's good, and it's uh, to me, it's a cornerstone of our country, but... Both companies are centered around the electrical industry. That's where I started coming out of the ID department. I started in the electrical industry. I went in distribution and between a manufacturer and distribution is a manufacturer's rep. A lot of people don't understand that. I can talk a lot about that if you want me to. And then on the manufacturing side, I came up with a box. You know, if I was going to invent something, it would be a box, you know, but we designed a box and made it an uh, enclosure and, uh, so the way we did it, starting both at the same time was very helpful because it allowed the manufacturer to stay flat because my rep company was the rep for the manufacturer. And ma matter of fact, after right. we sold that company, we're still the rep for that manufacturer and the largest one they have in the nation. So that's kind of fun. And its name, the first one was Adabox, as we talked about. Mm -hmm. What you might not know is the Ada is an ATM forward and, a, a, and backwards with my initials taken out. So it's truly an Aggie <laughs> box. Tech uh, Sales is Texas Enclosure and Control Sales. And just in case someone's mistaking that with the tech at the front of it, it our main colors, one of them is maroon. So <laughs> got to make sure that we wanted a dual meeting. So to be technical, tech sales. And true to Aggie form, we're like, we don't know how to spell. It's T-E-C. <laughs> so anyway, so that's kind of a brief explanation of what both companies done. We, uh, Tech Sales started with uh, me, one person in 2007. We now have 19 people we're interviewing for, we interviewed at 20th today. Wow. Um, we've grown from $1 million in sales to $50 million in sales in wow. about 12 years. So, um, holy cow. That's uh, amazing. Me, well, obviously, that's why you're on the Aggie 100 list. That, that is rocket growth, Mike. That's awesome. It's just hard work. And fun. Like you said, that obviously is a lot of hard work and a lot of fun you, and you're building a good team around you, but you have to have some, some tips or some hacks 
to help you manage that growth. And I'm, I'd be willing to bet that you learned some of those while you were on campus at A&M. Is there anything that you can look back and say, man, I learned that at A&M and that really helped me as an entrepreneur? I can't remember if it was Workman or Rice, but uh, they always said that to never let go of the money. You know, that's always something that we always keep control of. And then the values that I, that I was talking to you about when I toured the other place out, right? Um, mm-hmm. uh, the, just the moral compass of A&M, the patriotism, uh, those things, you know, treat people right. Work hard, not too much, you, you know, be balanced. And um, that's it. Treat people right in, around, above, below, everywhere. And so that's one of the things. Another thing Workman and Rice taught us is that the customers are every direction, you know. So oh, our manufacturers good. who we work for are our customers, right? Suppliers, customers, every, every one of them is a customer. And treat people the way you want to want to be treated. That's not necessarily A&M. That's more mom. <laughs> yeah. So, but, and dad. We got to stop giving moms all the credit, you know, because they're good, but they're not. They, dads do something. <laughs> that, do dads something. help it every now. We breathe. Anyway. <laughs> that's right. So we all face challenges in our in our business some of us more than others. But one thing that, that we always ask everyone that comes on here is, what was your single biggest challenge to your growth? And because we're Aggie Growth Hacks, what was the hack that you used to overcome it? The biggest challenge, I would say, you know, that obviously we do a lot of oil and gas in what we do. So, you know, there's been a couple of peaks and valleys. I remember kind of early on 2012, we did real well in 13 or so. I think it won't hold me exactly to it. You know, we weren't losing money, but everybody had to tighten their belt. But we held on to our team through that downturn because it, it was important. So the hack would be, if at all possible, continuity is hard to make. A family is hard to regenerate. Treat people as your family and do everything you can do to fight through it with those people. They, they do not, you know, it breeds loyalty, number one, and shows the love that you have for them. And that's what we, we do mix personal and business. That's just, I've always been different about that, I think. And love your people and fight to keep their jobs just like it's yours. Well, I bet there's probably some really difficult conversations that you as the leader had to have, but they probably respected and loved you for that openness during well, that time. they knew that we were struggling too. I mean, it wouldn't, you know, if you pay someone what their bare minimum is, and what's left over at the bottom is zero, then that's your pay <laughs> as an owner, you know? And uh, luckily we never got to that point, but it got, it, it got really thin. But as a, you know, we really never a hundred percent let someone go because of market performance or even really their performance. They usually decide to leave, but we have a lot of commissioned people. So, you know, that's right. We try and love them where they are, teach them, nurture them. And typically they'll find out that, their God-given place might not be where they are. And that's what we want. We want the best for them. Well, Mike, I, I hear in all that, that you talk about that this is this is much more than a business. It really is about family. And I think your, your higher calling that you've got, do you feel that you have actually sat down and, you know, Jim Collins says that every company should have a BHAG, a big, hairy, audacious goal, something that they, they constantly are moving towards. If I had to ask you what your BHAG was, what would you say? I don't want to ever be limited by that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there but, you go. But um, I don't have one. We, you know, we're a 50 million, so three plus million dollar commission rep agent, right? And our goal is to get to five as soon as we can. I don't mm-hmm. want to limit. I'm not going to say by 2025 or by 2020. <laughs> That'd be great. But uh, <laughs> you got to take what uh, God puts in front of you. There's so many opportunities that come. You, you I think I, I don't really care for projections personally. Mm-hmm. I know that that's kind of interesting, but you do have to have things to give people, right? But we never want to set a limit on things. We do have goals. Actually, when we're doing our annual meetings, we have what's called a minimum. That's where we feel like as a company, we need to be. The whole company yep. sees this too. We have what's called a target and then we have a goal and only internal people really see the goal. So I never want to keep people, you know, blow it out, go past that gold goal, just knock it out, go to platinum, whatever you want to come up with and stay true to who you are while you're doing that. Yeah, I like that. All right. So this brings us to our lightning round. Okay. So the okay. rules for the lightning round are real simple. You've got 30 seconds or less to uh, respond to each of these questions. Okay since we're all about hacks, right? Uh, what is your favorite hack 
at all. This could be technology, health, mindset, time, hack, whatever. Anything goes at this point. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. It's working for God, not for man. I like love that. it. I don't know if that's a hack or just daggone good good advice. And, you know, <laughs> that's a way to do it. So. God threw that, um, that thing right in this dummy's face in a hard way. And it's been since me. It was, it's on our business cards and on our website. I love that. Nice. I absolutely love that. Well, it made me great. <laughs> What what's one book, one podcast, or an album, or something that you're listening to right now that's bringing a lot of value to you that our listeners need to check out? I mean, I listen to so many different things. I don't read a lot because I'm so stuck in in journals of uh, of our business. I'm trying to keep this 30 seconds, but listen to Breakaway. I mean, you know, right there, there's so many things around you. Just grasp them and goof for them, and and try not to be lazy, which we all tend towards that, right? But yep. if this is an Aggie hack. You got breakaway sitting right there in front of you and Timothy spews some wisdom, no matter where you're coming from. And even if you're not a believer, there's some stuff there. What is breakaway? Breakaway is a Bible study Tuesday nights at nine at, in College Station. They usually read and, meet and read arena, but they've been in Kyle Field and they worship anywhere from five to 15,000 students. Do they do a podcast that people can tune into? They do. You know, by the time that we actually publish this episode, we'll go ahead and put it down in in our notes, you know, for us. So, and I love that that you are so open to sharing your knowledge and and wisdom and experience. Uh, So how can the Aggie Network get in touch with you and support you? However you want. (laughs) Okay. Uh, (laughs) We can open to talk to obviously schedule pending, but I, I return calls if I know who they are, if they're not leave a voicemail. If you send me an email, it might've gotten into spam. Don't think I'm blowing you off because I don't do that. So leave a voicemail. And if you email me once, it doesn't work, you know, call me, text me, or try and email me again, something, because it happens to everybody. Uh, I definitely want to support uh, Aggies. And especially, I'm assuming there'll be younger Aggies listening to this and pass on whatever I can. I, you know, a lot of dumb luck in here. So a lot of blessings. Well, Mike, we'll, we'll definitely put the uh, your email address in the show notes and really appreciate you joining us this afternoon. I love the, the attitude that you have, the wisdom that you've shared and just how you approach business as a family, family first mentality. It's been a whole lot. So really appreciate you coming on today. It's my pleasure. Anytime. How about that, Ags? Was that amazing or what? There's some pretty valuable hacks there that Mike shared with us. What was your favorite, Craig? Chris, my favorite one was that he realizes that customers are in every direction. Being in his industry where he's a rep, and so really he is between the end users of those electrical components and the actual manufacturers. And so he's got to to make sure that he and his team are providing a high level of customer service all the way around them, 360. Uh, I think that every business needs to realize that. A lot of them, a lot of them do, not, but not all of them. But I love how Mike just really brought that home and, and that mentality of making sure that you realize your customers are in every direction. W- what about you? What was your biggest takeaway? The thing that stuck out to me the most, and, and really the, and I don't know if it's a hack, but to me was uh, treat people right. And that's something that, uh, yep. you know, I, I've always tried to instill in my business. At one point in my career, I was a Rotarian. And, you know, part of that was, is it fair to all concerned, right? And, yep. you know, that's just been something that's been a part of my business. It's been a part of my upbringing. It's been a part of who I am at, at my core. If it's not right for my clients, it's okay. Then we just part ways, right? And if it's not right for us, a lot of times we end up, you know, eating a lot of things that, that right. you know, because it's just the right thing to do. So I, I really like that. And that's for sure. That's right. I appreciate that. And, and I, I try to do that as well. And I think a lot of our listeners do. Well, that's going to do it for the another episode of Aggie Growth Hacks. We hope you enjoyed it and you leave us a rating on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Podbeam, or wherever you found us. Be sure to check out our website at aggiegrowthhacks.com where you can hear all of our episodes and connect with us. We also want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, the McFerrin Center for Entrepreneurship at Texas A&M. Since 1999, the McFerrin Center for Entrepreneurship has served as the hub of entrepreneurship for Texas A&M University. If you're an Aggie entrepreneur or even a wantrepreneur, head over to their website and find a program that's right for you. 
Just search McFerrin Center for Entrepreneurship in Google and head on over there right now. So join us next time when we connect with another Aggie entrepreneur and learn how they hack their growth. Until then, I'm Chris Hunter. And I'm Greg Martin. Until next time, thanks and gig them.